Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Knack. We've got another video coming at you. It is going to be some finishing work on this little baby right here. Take a look at that. It is a Damascus blank. I got this from leatherandagger.com. So those of you who want to finish this project with me, go out to leatherandagger.com. Pick yourself up a blank. It doesn't have to be the same one. Pick any shape you want. The processes are going to be the same. Um, so pick whatever one you want, and we'll work on this together. It's pretty cool. Nice little uh, Damascus steel blank here. It's a fine specimen. You can see the layers look really good. There's not much pitting. In fact, there's none that I can really see. I think I found maybe one small spot. Beautiful. This is hardened to uh, RC58, if I remember correctly. It was either 56 or 58. Um, but regardless, that's right where you want it. So this comes to you ready to receive a handle. Really good stuff. And leatherandagger.com is actually quite cool. They're going to be selling a, quite a few finished Damascus blades as well as the blanks and then some making supplies. So for those of you trying to get started into knife making, it should be a great resource for you. Now I'm not going to show you the design quite yet. It's actually a fairly simple design that we're going for. Um, but I am going to show you the materials that we're going to use for the bolster and the handle on this guy. We are going to be using copper for the bolster. Look at that beautiful copper. I want to do this. I want to put some patina on it. It's uh, something I've never done before. And uh, it's just a chemical that you put on that will help put a, you know, bring the patina out. It's oxidation essentially is what it is. Um, quickly oxidizing that copper. We've got some copper sheet. Look how thin that is. We're going to be using that as a spacer um, through part of our handle. It should be kind of fun. And for the handle, we're going to be using tagua nuts this time. Now, tagua nuts, if you've uh, never seen them before, they are actually a nut. They come off of a tree. And these suckers are as hard as can be. Take a look at Listen to this. Oh, yeah. Some people call this vegetable ivory. They are really, really hard, and they are quite beautiful. When you sand them up, here's just a small test that I put together. You can see it's got a beautiful ivory color underneath that brown. And you can see there's little brown streaks. I want to try and incorporate those if possible. It's going to take some, some special measuring. We want to be real careful as we put the handle together. But we're going to be piecing these this together to create an, a scale for the knife so uh, I'll show you how we're gonna do that I've never done it before so I do hope that it works if it doesn't we'll rethink and uh, figure something else out But we need to go down to the shop and get started and that's gonna be our first step is working on the scale for this handle Alright, now it's serious. We've got the Tagua nuts selected. Tried to find the ones with nice flat sides, broad flat sides. Um, in a lot of ways, they're kind of triangular, the nuts are. They remind me of a lot of a Brazil nut in some ways. But uh, hardness-wise, they're not even close. But yeah, I've tried to find flat ones. So that way we can make a nice even scale. Should be good. We've got plenty of pieces cut. I've got four for each side. I'll probably only need three, so I'll have two extra. Um... 
But yeah, just line them up, and next thing we're going to do is sand down the bottoms, that flat side that we just cut with the saw. Obviously, when you cut with a saw, it's not going to be flat enough where you can where you can attach it to a knife handle without leaving small gaps. So we're going to want to sand that down. And these pieces are quite small, so I use Turner's tape. Um, it's double-sided tape. It's quite sticky, and you can stick it to your fingers. And then all of a sudden, it's a lot easier to control your little workpiece on a fast moving sanding belt like this. So this is a four inch, four inch uh, belt grinder. So, and you can see that the belt is actually quite dull. It's burning my taguio nut. So we're gonna remedy that here in just a moment, as soon as I get fed up with it and put on a new, a new sanding belt. If you can, go ahead and get a new one, uh, especially when you're working with woods like this that have like a very low burning point, which taguio nut apparently does. It uh, starts to brown very quickly, and the sharper your belt, the less problem you're going to have with burning, um, friction, you know, friction heat. So, and that makes also makes your work quite a bit faster to have good sharp belts. All right, next step, we're going to take these over to our two-inch belt grinder, and using a contact plate in the back, that way we have something something to push that belt up against. We're going to make some flat edges so we can start to put these together. And that's how they're going to go. So we're going to cut a flat edge on the next piece. That way we can begin to glue them together. Now in the design, we're actually going to put the copper between each, that copper sheet between each of these three sections, essentially is what we're going to put on each side. So three sections on each side, two copper lines right in between. Notice how brown that is. It got, it just burned up real good. So we're going to replace the belt here on the two inch belt grinder as well. Another thing you can do is if you have a belt cleaner, that actually helps quite a bit. Um, when you're dealing with sensitive woods like this. But having that new belt on there, cleaned it up, you can see right there that it's no longer burning it, and that's what we're looking for. So let's get back to some music here for just a few moments, and I'll be back with some more commentary as needed. Okay, so right now we're just going to be cutting out some copper, that copper plate that I showed you earlier. We're going to cut some spacers to put between each taguio nut here. So we've got those scales cut, we've got the sides sanded down at a 90 degree angle, obviously, and flat. And those spacers should fit quite nicely between the two, or between each scale. And there are faster ways to do this. I mean, you could really, when it comes down to it, you can cut it on the bandsaw. I don't like doing that because unless you have an actual metal cutting bandsaw, and even then you might run into this same problem. And the problem is, is that a bandsaw is going to bend the edges of the metal just a little bit too much. And if it doesn't put a, you know, a pretty hefty burr on it, it could actually bend the entire piece, especially when you're cutting something this small. So yes, it takes a little bit of extra time, but I'm going to go ahead and use a, a sharp knife here forget what these are called. Anyway, you can get the idea. So we're going to cut those pieces. Um, I just marked them out to be roughly a quarter of an inch larger than what I need to cover the blade as I piece those together. So just a little bit of overlap there. That way we'll have some room to grind it down and some wiggle room for installation of these handle pieces because uh, when we put them on, we're going to have to drill the holes in a correct spot. But more than that, as we put it up against the bolster, we're going to want those pieces to, uh, you know, to, to have a little bit of wiggle room on either side, just so we can get that perfect fitting against the bolster is more important. So we've got those little spacers cut. I'm going to start gluing these together here in just a moment. I'm lining them up just to see um, exactly how I want them and make sure that the copper is going to cover the bl or the handle rather, not the blade, but the handle. All right, so. Um, I'm marking these with just a little bit of paint. Uh, you can mark it with a permanent marker. I didn't really want to use a permanent marker. I guess any marker would work. I just happen to have not have any downstairs, but paint works. I just wanted to use something bright 
I end up using, I think, a green marker on the next one, but uh, um, the yellow paint is just going to be a marker. That way when I glue it, I know exactly where I'm going to put these two pieces together. So the little yellow marks let me know. Put the copper right in between where it's supposed to go. And I did make a mistake here, so I want to recommend that you don't use a CA glue if you're going to piece together scales for your knife handle. I thought that this would work, but it turns out the CA glue is really not what you need. And I got this tough impact formula, stuff like that, uh, whatever. It doesn't work. So make sure and just go straight up to a resin, uh, a two-part glue, something that's going to be extremely tough, durable, um, give you all the strength that you need to hold these scales together. Because in the end, I ended up running into trouble where the, uh, the bond that that blue glue made actually broke and we had to replace it. But... I did get it together. It, was, it did allow me to work the pieces together, but in installation, it sort of became a problem, especially when you kind of have to push a, put a little extra pressure on there with like a clamp and things like that. It just didn't work quite right, so I ended up having to take it off and then glue them in piece by piece with my resin glue. So, Okay, well, let's take a break here, listen to a little bit of music, and I'll be right back with you. <laughs> Okay, before it gets too far, I do want to let you know what I'm doing here. You may have noticed that I didn't drill all the way through that copper. And that's because I'm using kind of a spot drill. I'm drilling some very small holes here, as you can tell. These are, let's see if I can remember now. Um, is it 3.30 seconds, I believe? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, something like that, anyway. But it's quite small, so I use a slightly larger drill to drill a spot hole first. You notice that it was very short. Well, it makes it a lot easier to keep those uh, drills from walking if it's very short and if it's a little bit more sturdy, a little bit wider, um, larger diameter. So we're getting set up here to make some bolsters. They are going to be made out of copper. And I'm just using my blank to uh, make sure that I'm drilling these holes in the correct location. I'm actually going to use this drill or the, uh, the blank as kind of a, <laughs> I don't know what to call it like a guide almost for just a moment, but I've got it, I'll line it up where I want it. And then uh, I'm actually gonna push through, make a dot, and then I'll move the knife out of the way and then drill the hole the rest of the way. So that's kind of a fun way to do it. Um, the more exact that you can be in drilling your holes, the better. I know some of you may not have a drill press, and so doing it by hand, it, it is very difficult. I think it's doable, uh, but I think that uh, either finding access to a drill press or investing in a drill press is going to be a real wise move for you, especially if you're getting into, you know, applying handles to knives and stuff like that. So, okay. So we've got a couple holes drilled here and we cut one of these pieces off. The holes are all drilled in the same spot. We're going to go ahead and pin them together. You'll notice that I haven't cut the second bolster off of the, uh, the bar itself. That's just so I'm going to do some initial working on it where I'm going to push kind of hard, do a little bit of extra grinding. And as you may know, copper gets extremely hot very, very quickly from friction. So having a little handle to hold on to is quite advantageous. So we'll get that. Uh, those are put together now. Now, remember, these are zero clearance pins, but I don't peen them or pound them or anything like that. There's no glue, no anything. It's just friction holding it together, and it will hold it quite nicely when you're doing zero clearance pins like that. So um, if you have an arbor press, that's something I don't have, but if you have an arbor press, it makes it a lot easier to get the pins in and out. Um, I kind of have to tap them in very carefully or press them in with my hand, making sure not to bend those pins, but uh, it's definitely doable without it. I've I've uh, completed quite a few, I must say, without an arbor press. I've never even used one, unfortunately. Something I'd like to add to my collection eventually. However, it's doable, so there's proof. So now we've got those cut off of the, uh, the rest of the bar, and we're going to go a little bit slower. We're just taking off a little bit at a time, and you just want to work slow here. Work the pieces together. That's going to ensure that your two bolsters, one on either side, are going to be the exact same size. So working them together is, is usually just the best way to do it. 
Um, if you can't work them together, like pinning them together, if that's just not going to work for you, then working them apart, it's just a matter of of checking and, and rechecking and comparing the two pieces. Um, but notice that I'm dipping this in water constantly. And it's very, very difficult to keep this stuff cool enough to hold on to when they're that small. Yes, that is just the trouble with making making your own metal bolsters by hand. So um, we just do what we can. Having a nice bucket of cold water right next to you is a great way to deal with it. Um, you can see they're starting to take shape. And I went ahead and got a glove. It was just starting to burn my fingers on occasion. It, it Copper's worse than steel. It's way worse. Steel, for whatever reason, like wicks the heat away a little bit faster and it doesn't heat up quite as much um, with that friction. But copper is killer. Oh my goodness. I've got a couple blisters on my fingers from this process right here before I finally put the put the glove on, which helps, but it'll burn you right through the glove, especially if there's water involved. You get your glove wet and it'll burn you right through your glove. So be very careful. Go slow um, and uh, you know, try, and, try and keep your, your hands safe from that heat. All right, so they're starting to come together. You can kind of see the shape and copper, obviously very, very pretty. Um, I went down to a lower grid at this point and we're just taking it easy. We're trying to get the curves in, um, making sure that that it's going to fit right on the knife. Now, we haven't really had a chance to talk about that, but when you're finishing a, a blank like this Damascus blank, you're not going to be able to grind that blank. Otherwise, you're going to have to dip your uh, blank back into you know, an etching solution to get the color, the gray color to come back out. So grinding the knife is not what you want to do, which means you need to take extra care in shaping your pieces before you apply them. So that's what we're doing. We're taking extra care in and out of the water. It is a very long and time consuming process. So just uh, make sure you knock off a couple hours on your calendar and uh, get to it. Tons of fun. Let me take a break here for just a minute. We'll be back after a short musical interlude with probably a little bit of buffing. Oh, and by the way, stick around. Um, let's see. What was your name? Oh, I keep wanting to say bear with chainsaws, but it's not bear with chainsaws. Oh, it's warthog. That's who it is. Warthog. Warthog, stick around. We're going to talk about buffers here for just a little bit. So we'll be back. Okay, so now we're just uh, cutting the curves onto our bolster. I basically cut them perfectly square just about, and now you want to curve those edges. It's never fun to hold on to something that's perfectly square. Those edges sort of dig in a little bit. And once you got them curved, then we're going to take them over to the buffer. So let's talk about buffers. This buffer is what I use for, for buffing my steel, and obviously now at this point for copper, but it's a metal buffing system, okay? Uh, and what makes it so is, number one, the speed of the buffer. The buffer is going to be spinning at a little over 3,200 RPMs. Um, and right now we're using a, uh, it's a treated cotton wheel. Um, they're generally yellow like this, so when you see them, you'll know exactly what you're looking at. They're a rough buffing wheel. And we're going to be using green compound. You can use black compound. It's a little bit more coarse um, if you want. 
but I'm using a green compound. I find that it's coarse enough. Usually you should be getting all of your scratches out with your sandpaper. Um, you should, you know, it should be very, very fine scratches and green compound should be enough to get it out, especially when you're dealing with copper. Copper is relatively soft metal, so buffing it out is no big deal. And you can see that, uh, oh, oh, okay, so it came out of my hand, <laughs> okay. I made a slight mistake with the angle that I was buffing it at. It's obviously very hard to hold these tiny little pieces, but you just have to do it. Make sure you are wearing gloves and it will get hot, so have a bucket of water nearby. Um, it came out of my hand and I actually had to go back to the grinder and sand it down just a little bit. Luckily, it didn't hit in a you know in an area where I would have had to redo it, but I did have to re-sand it just a little bit and then rebuff it. So now we're going to be moving to a sewn wheel. These are a little bit softer. It's not treated, so they, like the cotton is not quite as stiff. And actually, this is more of like a flannel material. Um, but it's packed very tightly together because it's sewn. So it's a little bit dense. Um, but it's still pliable enough where you can push into it. And again, we're using a green compound. Now, it looks black, but that's mostly because of the copper actually rubbing off and the small, tiny little flecks. They turn black very quickly. Um, blacks it up pretty good and you can see here now using a soft wheel a loosely sewn wheel and it was a pink compound at that point and it's still blacked up from running across the copper so make sure you have a way to get the compound out of your wheels when you set up a buffing system but that's a little bit about buffing and when you start buffing wood and things like that um, you need to be going at a slower speed, otherwise the friction will start to create too much heat and you'll burn your wood. You'll actually put like char marks or burn marks or something on your wood. So, uh, and I, the one I have for buffing runs at 1700 plus, a little bit over 1700 RPMs. There's the handle. Look at that nice little bolster on there. We got that pinned down um, and we're peening it here. You can see we're using the small end of a little ball peen hammer, hammer there. And uh, sometimes it's good to tap it with the flat end on the other side and then go back to the other side and then peen it a little bit more, making sure that it's not coming through too much before it it, it, uh, it widens out. So peening, quite good for holding those bolsters on. If you peen it correctly, that sucker is permanent. It's not going anywhere. And we'll get you a short view here. Looks good. Now, obviously, we mark it up a little bit. Yeah, I buffed it up real nice before, so what? It's no big deal. We're also going to have to sand those little pins down. They're still just proud of the surface. <coughs> Excuse me. So you have to sand them down. So back to the fine sandpaper. <clears throat> and then back to the buffer. Now I'm using the tight wheel first. We really don't have to go back to the... Uh, the yellow wheel, the treated wheel. At this point, the black's going to be enough to get those small scratches out. And you'll see here in just a moment that it will be bright and shiny and beautiful copper. Then we take it over to the uh, to the light wheel. That's what I call it. It's uh, the loosely sewn wheel. It's quite airy. And we got it all buffed up. Now, once it's buffed up, we're going to clean it and treat it. And this is where the patina comes in. And yet again, we've got another failure, if you will, because I do not like how it turned out here. And actually, I, I shut the camera off because I was starting to get a little bit upset. It wasn't working the way I wanted. I put more on. I tried a couple different ways. I cleaned it again, put more on, and it just wasn't coming out the way I wanted. I wanted to get a little bit more than just kind of a, you know, a ugly copper color out of it. I wanted to get some like dark browns or something like that or... And there was a couple tiny little spots like on the side where there was a little bit of blue hues and it was quite pretty, but it just didn't turn out the way I wanted. So we ended up just buffing the patina off. That's the nice thing about putting a patina on. It's just on the very surface. You run it up against a buffer and it is gone. I didn't take the time to buff it off yet, uh, but we got a handle to put on. We're going to have to buff it up later anyway, so we'll just save it towards the end. Okay, so now we've got our first scale. And I'm grinding it here, and we're going to curve it to fit into that bolster. Take it easy. I'm using a very fine sandpaper. And you just take your time. Go slow. You don't want to ever take off too much material. Putting it back on is what is impossible. Taking a little bit more off, that's easy. So take it. Take your time with it. And um, just make it fit perfectly. You know, it's, it's not worth it to get into a rush when you're trying to fit these pieces together. So we get the scale set up. 
We're going to sand the top of it parallel to the bottom, or at least as close as we can. So that way we've got a flat working surface because we're going to start to drill holes in the scale. And here's the drill press. Got our drill press. I All you have to do basically is put it up against the knife, clamp it down, make sure that it's in position, and then just reach a pen through the holes on the other side and uh, mark it. It's not the most exact way. If you really want to get exact, you need to use um, you need to use paper and some uh, geometrical implements, etc. Whatever. Usually, it's close enough, especially when you're dealing with uh, wood, and things like that. Um, but if you're if you practice at it, the way that I do it, just putting it on the knife and then you know drawing through the the blade or the handle at this point, I guess. It works just fine. It just takes a little bit of practice. So when you're doing it for your first time, go slow. Make sure that it's right where you want it before you mark the holes. And then just get a real good mark in the center so that you can uh, have a good spot to put your drill on. Okay, so now we're just going to sand it down. And uh, at this point, all it is is a matter of sanding this down to the correct shape so that it's not going to overlap and it's not going to be too small. So again, it's a go slow process. It's actually quite easy. It's just like making the bolster. So um, essentially it's the same process here for a finished knife. Now remember, if you look at, if you've seen some of my other videos, a lot of the times I put the rough handle on before um, we sand it down to this nice shape, right? And it actually gets sanded and, and buffed up and everything together while it's all on the knife itself. But that's the difference between making one from scratch yourself and from finishing like a Damascus blade. So if you make your own Damascus blade, you're going to etch it. You still need to make the scales perfect before you put them on. It's not like what I've shown you in some of my other videos. So keep that in mind when you're doing a finished knife like this. And there she is, ladies and gentlemen, in all her glory. And I've got some beautiful slow motion camera here. Look at this. Slow motion. Beautiful. Anyway, the knife, I think, turned out real well. You can see some of those little brown marks on the uh, handle right there next to the copper. That's exactly what I wanted. I actually wanted it to be a little bit more, so I think next time I'll cut the scales a little bit more shallow. But all in all, I think I got the effect that I was looking for. You can see those nice ivory colors, a little bit of yellow coming through in some of it. But that tag you and it sure looks nice. That copper looks great, all buffed up. It's just bright and shiny against that gray of the uh, Damascus blank, blank there. And uh, man, couldn't be more happy with the way that this knife turned out. So props to leatherandagger.com. Uh, for your information, folks, these knives do come pre-sharpened. And I said knives, I meant blanks. But regardless, it's a great product. Hope you have fun completing a project similar to this. If you have something you'd like to see in an upcoming video, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.